go. Yeah, got this. Oh, hi. Hey, hey, everybody. This, uh, well, it's Sunday. It's November the 28th, and we're getting ready for worship. Um, it's the first Sunday in Advent, and the text, it's, it's really wild. I mean, Jesus says some stuff that to our ears sound just crazy. The, the, the sky, the sun, and the moon, and the stars will be great signs, and the waves and the water will rise, and the nations will tremble, and people will faint, and yikes! It's actually part of the apocalyptic tradition. And maybe you know this, but the word apocalyptic means, well, it means to pull back the curtain, to reveal and disclose, to look behind the scenes and to see what God is about. So what is Jesus talking about and what are we really waiting for? Let's go see. Oh God, the world is falling apart. Floods and fires, storms and plagues. Where are you in all of this? Where are we, your church, your people, lighting one little candle to stand against the darkness that seems so vast and so encroaching? Give us strength to stand up when all around is falling apart. Give us strength to lift our eyes and look with hope, with courage, and with trust in your promise that you are coming, always coming into the world with steadfast love that endures. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. God of strength, stand up your church to proclaim your steadfast love. Open our eyes and hearts to recognize your face in all people and all creation. Amen.
first reading is from Jeremiah 33, verses 14 through 16. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called, The Lord is Our Righteousness. A reading from Psalm 25, verses 1 through 6. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Rather, let those be put to shame who are treacherous. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are for everlasting. The second reading is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 9 through 13. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you face to face and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. And may he so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. reading from Luke's Gospel. Jesus said, There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Look who's coming! Hi, what have you got? Does it go in the basket? Who is that for? 
Is that to share with people who need food? Thank you. Wow. Miss Amy's class, you're very generous. Oh, do you have, raise your hands if you have food at your house. Do you have food at your house? Did you know some people don't have food at their house? Do you think that they get hungry? Yeah. Do you think maybe we could help out by giving them some food? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, baby. Thank you. Awesome. Oh, look at all this food, guys. So one thing that we can show our thankfulness to the people around us is by helping them, right? And this is a way we can help them by giving them this food and donating it. So thank you guys so much for helping donate all this food. What do you think, Milo? Do you think there's enough food for everybody? Yeah? Shall we donate it to people who need it? You don't need your hat, but there is God maybe. God made does and fair and sweet. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hi. 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 Look at this. Look at this. And I'm here with Miss Lindsay because one of the ways that we say thank you to God is by sharing with other people. Who's going to have Thanksgiving dinner at their house? You are? Do you know some of the people won't get Thanksgiving dinner? So we're going to help them have Thanksgiving dinner. Can you help, Miss Lindsay? Help? I need help putting all of these candles. Look at all that food. That is going to feed lots of families, boys and girls. Thank you guys so much. Can we say thank you? Thank you. Thank you so much for helping all the people who need food. And can we say thank you back? Go thank you with our sign language. Thank, thank, thank you. you. In fact, I think you guys ever heard the song where you go, oh, thank you, God. Thank, thank you, God. God. For God. For God. God. Is good. For God is good. And his love endures forever. Thank you, God, for food. God is good. The world doesn't need the church, really. The world doesn't need a church that's really just a museum filled with religious artifacts and nice religious holidays. The world doesn't need it. Doesn't need a, a legacy of finger-wagging piety. The world doesn't need the church that's really just a long history of self-perpetuating order and prim niceness. No, the world just doesn't need that church. I wonder, though, does the world need another one? Need one that knows in its bones that the gospel is true. 
Does the world need a church that has bet everything on the proposition that God really is in this Jesus, in the life, death, and resurrection of this Jesus? A church that really understands that Jesus is present here in, in reality. Oh yes, Jesus born born so long ago and placed in a manger. Yes, yes, amen. And oh yes, Jesus coming someday in great awe and great glory. Yes, yes. But Jesus now, but Jesus here. You know, Jesus said there will be signs Signs in the sun, in the moon, in the stars, and on the earth distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power. Great glory. Do, do you think that Jesus maybe had some kind of magical telescope that he could see way, way ahead? That he could see deep into the future, deep into our future, and perceive and even list all the, the calamities that beset us? It's like he, like he knew exactly what was going to be happening, that he would know the signs, the, the sun and the moon and the stars, uh, all of the distress, all of the, the nations confused and the sea rising up with the roar that he could see the waves pounding and the people shaking and the powers, oh, the powers fainting. Oh, Jesus, I, I think you nailed it, man. <laughs> so how did he know? How did he know? He seemed to foresee the distress of all that is about us. The sun and the moon and the stars, the, the planet and the atmosphere, the, the edges moving and all these lines between the dry land and the sea, between the warming and the wasting. How did he know the storms and the fires? How did he know the, the floods the earthquakes. How did he know the disease, the extinction? How did he know the hunger and the war and the terror? How did he know the prejudice and the corruption and the hubris? You know, I, if, if I didn't actually read it myself in the headlines on the news, I would think it was all just this kind of opening scenes of some dystopian science fiction movie or something. You know, no wonder. No wonder us most, you know, want to just, just run and, and turn and, and even hide to, to, to herd ourselves up and look the other way, to retreat in the face of all of this to retreat in the face of this brain-breaking upheaval. You know, just put a sign on the door, closed until further notice. I want to hide. And maybe you do too. To find our way to our corner until someday somebody would come and just make it all stop. But just about the time that any reasonable savior would cut his losses and, you know, walk away, just about the time any conventional Messiah would just say, hey, you know, forget it. You made this mess. You clean it up. Jesus doesn't go there at all. Instead, Jesus says, now when these things begin to take place, and here's the wildest thing of all. Jesus said, when these things begin to take place, you know what? Stand up. Stand up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. <laughs> Man, the world needs that church. 
The world pines for that church. The world waits for that church that is convinced, that is the, the community of this Christ. You know, a church that lives in between, in between that first coming of Jesus and that second coming of Jesus. Gang, we were made for this. We were made for standing up, for raising our heads here and now. In these times between the birth of Jesus and the coming again of Jesus, this church, this Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Watching and waiting, we pray for all who yearn for God's presence. Stir us up, O Lord, and come, stand us up to proclaim your love, you who stand with us always. O give thanks unto the Lord, for God is good. Steadfast love endures forever. God of wind and fire, storms and streams, sorrow and joy, promises kept and new dreams awaken, shelter your people. We pray for those whose lives have been upended by natural disasters, for the work of Lutheran Disaster Response, Lutheran World Relief and other relief organizations. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for God is good. Steadfast love endures forever. God of compassion, bring righteousness and goodness to all peoples of the earth. Give a heart of discernment and integrity to leaders in our communities. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for God is good. Steadfast love endures forever. O oh, God of comfort and care, be present with those who watch and wait. Come to all who await births, deaths, divorces, new unions, new jobs, retirements, healing, and life transitions of every kind. Especially we remember Holly, Tristan, Hannah, Carter and Grace, Tyler James, baby Adrian, Mark, Bev and Bev, Larry and Larry, Tracy, Doreen, the sister of Ron, Bill and Bill, Doug, Dana, Nancy, Christina, Glenn, Ted, the father of Sherry, and Al. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for God is good. Steadfast love endures forever. God of forever, we give you thanks for those who have gone before and trust in your promise that we will gather in you. Be with Jeff and Stacy as they mourn the loss of Augie. God of new life, you come to us in unexpected places. Give us trust. Receive these prayers and those of our hearts in the name of Jesus, your Son, the Christ. Amen. And teach us to pray as you have taught us, our Father in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. 
For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. And share the peace, toes, elbows, however. <laughs> Have you got this? Have you got this yet? Your plan for giving? Some are coming in, but we want you to think about that and pray about that. And I love it. I love this picture that says, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, living gratefully in 2022. I'm going to live gratefully and generously. And I love this page with all the pictures of the good work that goes on because my gifts help that happen of the Kids Club Ministry and making huge batches of brownies for the Hot Meals Coalition, all the music and the ministries of our church and our outreach. I love this where it asks me to plan ahead and think carefully and prayerfully about how I'll be part of all of that. And you know what? I even love this oh, form on back. I love this form because it's Give Plus and I can think and I can fill it out, and then I can not forget about it, but also not worry about it. My gifts are going and doing their good work, whether I worry or not. It's there. Fill that out. And if you don't want to, you know, I'll fill it out for you. I can put your name on there in an amount. We'll get it right in. No, we won't do that. Because that is your plan for giving. Your plan for how you will live gratefully and generously in this coming year and how you want your gifts to do God's good work in the world. But I do want you to do this. Bring it on December 5th. Bring it with you and be part of the celebration of that giving and living and worship as we welcome newcomers, as we celebrate with food trucks and fun and do all of that on December 5th, 9.30 for church. Come on, be here in person. Beginning Wednesday nights in Advent, December 1, join us in person in the sanctuary for worship or online at 7 p.m. It will be live streamed. Stir up your power, Lord. You will hear stories. You will hear homilies. You will hear wonderful music. We will celebrate the Eucharist together, live and online, live stream. On the 19th, we will be live in the sanctuary worshiping Sunday morning for the cantata. And it will be a celebration of sound and music. Come to the cantata. You know, we'll be masked, we'll be vaxxed, but we will be inside the sanctuary for that morning's worship, the cantata. That night, family and friends gathering will also be here and we will have a live nativity complete with donkeys and we will have candlelight worship and glow sticks and we will have, oh yeah, that red clothed elf will be here later in the evening too. So come for family and friends gathering. On December 12th, the weekend before, you know what? We've done fabulous with our food drive and here's the chance again to bring your food and bring your gifts. We're gonna have some youth out there collecting and you can drive up and bring that as you come into worship. And Christmas Eve, people are asking. So write this down, take note. Christmas Eve service will be online. You can, you can participate that way. And Christmas Eve service will be in person in the sanctuary, if you're masked, if you're vaxxed, and we will spread out with a max of about 150 people in here. So we kind of need to know, do you want to come at 3 p.m.? Do you want to come at 5 p.m.? Those are family-friendly services. Do you want to come at 11 p.m.? We'll have candles. We'll have glow sticks earlier too. But if you come at 11 p.m., we will pull out all the stops and always at all, we will sing Silent Night for the birth of the Christ child. Let us know your plans so we can plan accordingly and welcome you to Christmas Eve. Two, three.
forever all give thanks unto the Lord for God is good steadfast love endures forever oh give thanks unto the Lord for God is good steadfast love endures forever oh give thanks unto the Lord for God is good, steadfast love endures forever. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for God is good, steadfast love endures forever. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for God is good. Steadfast love endures forever. And now this benediction. The God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing, so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit through Christ Jesus, for whom we wait. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is near. Thanks be to God.